Hello friends and viewers, Tal here and welcome to another Legion uh, video. Today we're going to be talking about the latest Q&A that Blizzard had with uh, the community um, and basically it's about artifact weapons, the progression system, how all that works out. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be specifically talking about anything that um, I find would be important to tanks as well as anything that would fulfill my own personal uh, quest for the best transmog ever in the history of life. But yeah, anyways, um, it's going to be, this video probably won't be too long, and it, there's going to be more than just the artifact video. I'm also going to be covering the recently announced and released information about the Legion pre-patch, which I think is also going to be very, very important for you guys to know, which is why I'm making this video about both of them. So expect this video is probably not going to be too long. I'm just going to go over the most important things for each section, uh, but it is basically about the artifact uh, Q&A that recently happened on Thursday, and what information we know about the Legion pre-patch thus far. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this. So anyways, the Artifact and Order Hall Revelance. Uh, essentially, what they're talking about here is that the Artifact weapons are, in a sense, um, modular. Order Halls and Artifact Weapons, the story is going to progress throughout the expansion, so they're going to be adding more to it. There's an actual other appearance that hasn't been added just yet, but that people have already seen. It's probably like data mined and all that. Um, that will probably be available in a patch, and Order Halls will get their story extended. Each Order Hole, if you don't know, has a very specific class story uh, for DKs. It is about finding and raising the four horsemen of the of the you know for the lich king well not the lich king but the four horsemen again um and for other classes such as i believe the paladins it is about finding out what happened to illyria and Teralian. so it's little things like that it's very spoiler heavy um but very very good quest content essentially so when artifact when legion releases there's going to be a base artifact an upgraded one from the class order hole campaign, a PvE quest line that rewards one, and a PvP version as well as the hidden appearances. Now the hidden appearances are like special quest things that you can do. Each spec will have a specific way of unlocking an extra appearance. Now this appearance is again hidden, so you don't actually see it from the very beginning. For, for example, Havoc Demon Hunters, you actually have to do a couple of little quest steps here and there and then kill a named mob that drops something and then gets you um, on the right path. For other, uh, other specs and classes, you can actually earn it from buying from people with reputation. Once you have a certain reputation level, you get them. All very cool stuff. It's not all going to be equal. Some classes are going to have very in-depth things. Other classes is going to be as simple as, oh, you're exalted with us? Buy this for 5,000 gold. There you go. Done. So just something to keep in mind. But it is really, really cool that they're adding that variation and adding that more of an incentive for artifact appearances. Because again, I think Transmog is one of the best things about this game. And as you guys don't know this because I haven't really gotten into it, but I'm a goddamn Transmog fiend. And you're going to go ahead and experience that with me as we go through Legion together, if you so choose to keep watching my content. Uh, good things to note here is that they are looking for a way to allow Druids to keep the artifact forms after Legion, and they're looking to try to make the artifact variants like transmogable possibly once the expansion is done, and maybe you won't be able to go back into Legion and get all the artifact variants. They're trying to make it a reward for playing throughout the expansion. So, artifact respect. We're getting into the actual nitty gritty now. You will be able to respect your artifact, but there is a high cost. Essentially, when you're going to be respecting stuff, you're going to lose some of the points that you're going to be spending, uh, but you will be able to respect it and kind of move it around depending on what you need. Now, as a Mythic Raider, I think I might be put into situations at times where I'm going to have to respect because maybe I have enough points to get to one golden tier, but maybe for this fight I need the other golden tier. It might happen. I think for most people it won't be too much of an issue, um, but every time you respec, you kind of have to put your points in carefully because when you start respecing a lot, you're going to get fucked. And you're already going to be fucked because getting all the traits is going to be very, very difficult. It's going to take a long, long time. So don't get double fucked. Just get once fucked. And they're going to try not to tweak traits so that a free respect is necessary. But I can tell you right now, some of the whole point of the artifact traits is that those are tweaking numbers. That is so they can tweak specs without having to change spells. So they say they don't want to tweak them so much so they don't have to respect. But we all know how Blizzard balances. I'm going to go ahead and just let you know that it's it's going to sound like some of those traits are going to get switched around during the expansion. And if you don't think you're going to have to respect, oh, you're in for a world of hurt. So... 
The first 12 traits are going to have a small cost increase, but after that the cost increases much faster. Artifact knowledge is going to increase the rate that you gain artifact power, and it's actually going to be something that as the expansion progresses will get higher and higher, so that you're gaining more artifact, no artifact power from the same source as you were before. It basically is a catch-up mechanic that uh, doesn't thrice fuck you, essentially. And you can research the artifact knowledge at the cost of order hole resources. Uh, so it's going to be important to keep up with your order hole, order hole missions and you know all those quests, story quests and all that kind of stuff. So you can research it and research starts at five days per work order and it goes faster for everyone as time goes on. Artifact knowledge goes up to level 25 now. They might increase it a little bit in patches, but you're basically going to be working on this the entire time. So don't slack. Please don't slack. And maintaining multiple specs at a high level, it will take a lot of time. Okay, they're saying it's going to take a similar amount of effort as you would have put in another expansion. I don't truly believe that. Uh, reason being that the artifact, so the artifact points is going to be one point of contention. You're not going to be able to keep it the same way as your main uh, your main artifact, and it's going to be a pain. It really is, especially if you try to get into like super min maxing and you're trying to get legendary items on top of it. Forget it. You're going to be fucked. But just the fact that each of the weapons has three relic slots slots. And you know these are basically taking the place of weapon upgrades. You need to get your relic slots for your other weapon. It's it's going to be a lot of work, and you're going to have to put that work in. I feel bad for anyone that's a mage or a rogue or a hunter. You know you have three DPS specs. Maybe one's good on one fight, one's on the, good on the other one. You guys are gonna get super fucked. So sorry for you guys. But artifact knowledge is per character system, not account wide. So keep that in mind. They are expecting it's going to take a few months to unlock every trait in the artifact, and it's going to take time based on what type of player you are. So people like me that are going to know life this game for a little while, you will be able, I'll have more artifact traits than other people. But either way, it's going to take a few months. So keep that in mind. Please be careful with the way you spend your points. And then they're going to talk here about the hidden artifact appearances. Um, it's going to feel different for each class. It's There's not an equality between all the classes and specs for hidden artifacts. Red Paladins, Arcane Mages will be fun but then the other ones will just be you know honored with a faction exalted with a faction or just shit tons of gold so just keep that in mind if you are lucky enough to have a very epic and amazing quest f you know fucking awesome to you and if not well maybe you should level an alt and kill yourself because of how annoying it's going to be to keep that up <laughs> um team balance all the classes against each other and did another legion balance pass with all the classes and their completed artifacts so it's good that they're keeping in mind that the classes need to be able to play well without all the artifacts um i can tell you from experience playing on the legion beta and the legion alpha they are definitely not hitting that mark because for example protection paladins avenger shield does absolutely nothing defensively until you get the artifact tree it has no benefit whatsoever besides just being cool and being dps but it will not help keep you alive until you get the complete artifact and i think that's kind of a really big difference it's the difference between a uh, guardian druids frenzied region having some healing and then when you get the artifact trait it does a lot more healing that's at least you know at least you have the baseline heal at least protection paladins they get nothing on their shield until the artifact trait that's kind of, that's too big of a difference i think in my opinion but again it is just my opinion Completed the achievements for unlucky artifact appearances are character specific, some are account wide, and you need to obtain an upgraded model before you contain the extra colors. So artifact traits are something that can be tuned to maintain class balance. Again, just keep this in mind. They said that they don't want to change it so much that they're going to be needing to do free respects. I struggle to think of how that's going to actually work out through a year, maybe a two year process with this expansion. Who knows how long this is going to be, but I get a feeling there's going to be a couple of respects that are going to come out, especially once people figure out the really game bringing combos uh, on certain fights with certain mechanics and things like that. So just keep that in mind. There's some overlap between the artifact quest lines. You will have already seen that if you've been watching anyone do the artifact quests. Artifacts are really different from other weapons because of their history. They actually have books that you'll be able to go ahead and learn about the artifacts if you're a lore nut. I am. Um, and I'm personally going to appreciate that, but I know most people probably won't care too much. And you're actually going to get more of the story as you gain artifact knowledge. Now, there's a couple of different weapon types that they chose for the artifacts. For example, the Holy Paladin had a mason shield for a very long time, but the old classic Holy Paladin from World of Warcraft was a big hammer in a book, which is fantastic. That's cool. Uh, Guardian Druids, they're going to be trying to... They might be adding a way to swap back to the original model. 
um, if people like that, and I think that's a great idea, people like what they like and they don't have to explain it or give a reason for it. So being able to choose between the Claws of Ursoc model or your baseline Druid model or any of the other versions, I think that's a fantastic thing. Let's keep looking here. They took away the teleports to the order hole because they realized that you didn't actually have to go back to your order hole that often. And I can attest to that. You don't get enough artifact power um, so quickly that you need to go back all the time to upgrade your your weapon. Um, and you don't. The missions take a really long time, so it's not like you'll be there every other hour like the garrisons were. Um, and honestly, even if you get a shit ton of artifact power, it's not super important that you upgrade it until you get to like the end game. Like you're gonna want to make sure it's upgraded by the time you go and like raid or do a dungeon. But when you're leveling and stuff, it's not that important. Not really at at, at the end of the day. But they did give you a Hearthstone to Dalaran, and that's why that's a central hub. So let's keep seeing here. Order hole NPCs. They they might add some more during the patches. Uh, they're just gonna have famous NPCs in each order hole, and you're gonna have just a small number of champions uh, that it's gonna make you have to choose who you're gonna have. I haven't really been playing with the champion system too much. It's just like the evolution of garrison followers, uh, but it it seems like it might be a little more focused, so that might be nice. But one of the reasons they didn't put any services in their order hole, like uh, banks, transmog, and like, uh, although if you have a transmog mount, you can do that anywhere. But they didn't put those types of things in there because they don't want people hanging out there. They want people to hang out in Dalaran or in the world. But you do have access to trade chats, so you're not cut off completely from the world. So, continuing on, we don't play hunters. Artifact unlock. Let's see. There are no plans to require specific levels of artifact progression to access content. There will still be item level requirements. Keep that in mind. And item levels of your artifact goes up with relics. Remember that. Artifact unlock progression in pre-made groups isn't expected to be a huge factor for most groups. I promise you players will find a way to be a dick no matter what obstacles you put in front of them. They will be assholes either way. But you can't inspect people and see their artifact unlock progress. That might be actually good, but also bad because... It's going to, if you notice something obvious and you're not an asshole about it, you can actually help players out. But blocking this off, I understand why they would do that, because they don't want dicks to have the tools to be dicks. But at the same time, it will stop people from helping out when they're actually trying to help out. Uh, and then other than that, it's really just nothing too more. It's more lore stuff. So essentially, it just confirms a lot of things that we already know about artifacts. Um, they're going to take a while to get the power up to do what you need to do for them. Respecting is going to cost a lot. They're going to be interesting and different. There's going to be It's going to be modular. They're going to add more things to it as the expansion gets released. So you want to keep up with it as best as you possibly can because slacking a little bit too much might hurt you later on. Now, I'm a Mythic Raider. You know, I already told you guys this. You know the way I think about this. I'm going to have to keep my ass on this the entire time if I want to be caught up, if I want to be trying my best, doing my best. Not everyone's going to be like that. I gear my content towards Mythic Raiding, Mythic Dungeons, all that kind of shit. But I know other people watch me and they're not specifically doing anything like that. If you're just normal, heroic raiding, doing things like that, you're going to want to keep up with it either way because the artifact weapons, the traits, all that kind of stuff, it really does add up. It's really, really important. Um, but just know that you have to be careful what you choose because you don't want to be respecting too often because there is a high cost. Okay, well that's good to know. Now we're going to go ahead and switch gears over to the Legion pre-patch. The only reason I'm putting them together is I don't really feel like each one of them needs their own video. Uh, I kind of like to just compact it, just make it all one. Just make it easy. So we're on Blizzard Watch, one of my favorite websites ever. Just throwing a little shout out to them. But essentially, uh, the pre-patch will be rolling out sometime soon. We don't know when that is, but we do know that the PvP season is going to be ending, I believe, on the 19th. Let me make sure. It looks like it's going to be ending on the 19th. So it would be a safe bet to either say that the pre-patch will launch that day or the next week, which is more likely. Being that when the season ends, they have to take a little bit of time to go ahead and see the PvP people that you know were top and all that kind of stuff. So it, it seems likely that it could be July 26th or August 2nd. And the reason for that is that when... Legion goes live, Demon Hunters will not be immediately available in the pre-patch. No. They will begin around the second or third week of August, no later than August 17 globally. So by August 17th, by this day here, Demon Hunters will be enabled. But they're making it sound like this is a, a, a an event that's going to build up. It's going to you know, get more and more dire and more things are going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an event entirely around the Demon Hunters breaking out. It's probably going to be demons have invaded the Vault of the Wardens. 
oh shit, demon hunters are out, boom, everyone joins them. So by this day, we will have demon hunters. Hopefully, we'll have it a little bit earlier, but you know, either way, we're going to have it when we have it. So what's going to happen with the pre-patch? The initial thing is going to be immediately transmogrification is going to be updated. You're going to have your appearance tab. What does this mean? I highly, highly recommend every single person that's listening to me right now, if you give any sort of shit about transmog, the first thing you want to do when the pre-patch launches is log into every single character that you have that has anything of value transmog wise go into your banks and honestly honestly because I'm a paranoid fuck I would equip every single item but you probably don't need to because logging in and having it in your bank in your void storage um, or in your bags should add it to your appearance tab anything super special that you really really care about I would check the appearance tab make sure that's actually been added um, but once that is done clean your fucking bags out throw away all of that gear that you don't need anymore clean out your void storage clean out your bank clean out your bags make room because it's new expansion time and you need that fucking room mind you i don't know what use the void storage is going to have um now that you're getting rid of all those you know transmog things i'm going to put my legendary items in there personally but i don't know what other use the void storage is going to have but get into all your characters Throw all that shit away, make sure it's in your appearance tab, get rid of it, clean out your area. The next thing is that there's going to be immediate class updates. Everyone's talents is going to be changed, everyone's going to be switched over to the new systems that we've been talking about uh, in my videos and, and countless other people's videos. So all that's going to change and you're going to have to deal with a scenario in which you don't have your artifact weapon, but you are balanced around not only having the artifact ability, but having the artifact traits. What this means for most classes, I don't know. I can tell you that I think Protection Warrior will probably be okay. Uh, Protection Paladin will probably be okay. Blood DK, you're gonna have a little bit of a rough time because consumption is your big oh shit button. But I think you'll be okay, especially because all content is gonna be nerfed. And I think you'll be fine, but you're gonna be affected more than the other two. Brewmaster, um, shit, I, I don't know. I think Brewmaster is going to be fine as well. They're not as reliant on their artifact ability. Their artifact traits do buff up their healing a lot, but I think Brewmasters will be fine. And Guardian Druids, you're going to be fucking Gucci. Don't even worry about it. Um, Vengeance Demon Hunters won't exist until they do exist, and they are the biggest ones. Demon Hunters in general are the biggest ones that are going to be affected because they cannot get all their talents. You cannot get your artifact weapon, which gives you some, another ability. You're going to be kind of gimped. Just keep that in mind. And then they're just letting everyone know that essentially um, it's going to be a march towards the expansion's release, which is going to be August 30th. 30th. So within about one or two weeks into it, Demon Hunters are going to be released. There's going to be bur Burning Legion Invasions. There's going to be the early access for the Demon Hunters. And then the battle on the Broken Shore will begin. <clears throat> Excuse me. So essentially... That's what's going to happen when the pre-patch hits. And people are already guessing it's going to arrive July 19th. But, I mean, that's the same day the season ends. It could happen. I'm not going to say it can't. But I, I think maybe the 26th would make more sense. I, I want my Demon Hunter as fast as possible. I kind of don't like that it's going to be out. It's not going to be out with the pre-patch. But I get it. Whatever. It's fine. Um, but that's basically things to keep in mind. Biggest thing is just... Figure out how your class is going to play without access to some things. And keep in mind, it is not an accurate representation of what your class is going to be like. Because you need the artifact weapon. There's a reason it's the first thing you do when you start the expansion. You need the artifact weapon, you need the traits. Do not be discouraged until you get some of those things. And then transmog, because transmog is the best thing in this game. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. That's all the info I have for you, really. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and drop it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I appreciate the shit out of all of you guys. And I thank you for giving me the time of day. Have a good one, guys.